All right, I'm here with Greg Dembski, a longtime sports fan, um, born and raised in Baltimore, right? That's right. And um, so he got to see some great sports moments throughout the years. And uh, my, my first question for you is, um, do you have like an early memory of a sporting, a sporting event you either went to or saw that like, st like stuck with you, still sticks with you today, would you say? Yeah, when I was a kid, we were always, from the time I can remember, we were always big Baltimore Colt fans. Not Indianapolis, Baltimore. And um, when I was 12, I got a chance to see the great Johnny Unitas play. My dad took us to see a game against the Miami Dolphins, and we saw Johnny Unitas beat the Dolphins, which was uh, magical when I was a kid, really magical. Yeah, Johnny U, I mean, he kind of changed the game. Of course, he was a part of that, uh, when you were really little, the, the greatest game ever played. Um, which kind of put pro football on the map, and then a part of a lot of those great memories in the um, throughout the '60s and all that. Um, do you have? I mean, he was e extremely tough as a quarterback too, as you know. Um, he was was he probably your your hero? Would you say when you were a kid? Yeah, he was. He was probably one of my my biggest football heroes. But there was a lot of them back in those days, and uh, we there were some running backs that we were like Lenny Moore was was one of them. Of course. Artie Donovan was, you know, um, a legend, legendary um, character, not just a football player, <laughs> but a legendary character. And when we got older and lived in Maryland, uh, after um, Becky and I got married, he used to come on and he used to do a TV show. And I was really? in my 30s, and he was just a, he was just bigger than life. He was a character. So that whole era, and uh, John, the players, you know, used to work during the off season, pretty much. And then they would play football during the season, and you you'd see them around town and really? that kind of stuff. Yeah, wow, it's, it's a lot different than it is now. It, yeah, exactly. <laughs> a lot exactly. more high profile. How cool is it now when you go to M&T Bank Stadium or you go to Baltimore and you get to see that huge statue of Johnny Unitas and you get to you know rub the toe for good luck? That's 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 really cool. That's got to be really cool for you. That's uh, that's just just like I said, it's legendary. It's uh, it's all part of Baltimore. Football and it's something, unfortunately, that Indianapolis will never know because that wasn't part of their heritage. Right. And uh, I'm glad that that's kind of that's kind of stayed here. That history's kind of stayed here because it's it's you know it's story. It's it's uh, there's definitely a, a very rich tradition, a rich history in Baltimore. Absolutely. And of course, the great Ray Lewis came came when the Ravens <clears throat> moved to Baltimore, second uh, second pick for the team, and I believe in the second round. Um, I mean, what can you say about Ray Lewis? Um, you were actually at his last game as a Raven, the playoff game um, between the Col uh, against the Colts, I should say rather. Um, what was the emotion like that day? Do you do you remember? Well, it was um, first of all, it was, a, it was a wild card game, so it was a, it was a win or lose game for the Ravens, and uh, we knew it was Ray Lewis's last game. And uh, uh, I, when the Colts, I'll never forget the day the Colts pulled out of Baltimore to go to Indianapolis. I remember where I was when I saw those moving vans leaving. It just, it was like a piece of my heart yeah. left. Mm -hmm. And uh, I put a curse on the Colts, and it lasted for about 13 years. But um, uh, was really wanted to beat them badly. And then it just so happens that, that Michelle got his seats right above the tunnel where Ray Lewis came out, and, and I had uh, got pictures of him coming out and doing his famous dance out of the tunnel the last time in Baltimore. And then, of course, the uh, Ravens went on and, and p pounded the Colts pretty good and then went on and won the Super Bowl that year. So it was it was just awesome. That whole that whole thing was really neat. And then how about the end of the game where they line him up at running back and he does he does the dance. He I, I don't know if he's ever played an offensive position with the Ravens for, for any reason. He wasn't like, you know, the fridge or any, anybody like that. But, I mean, that, that, that must have been, like, sent chills. That was the only Up time that I've ever seen him play offense. I think he's the only player he ever played <laughs> offense. Yeah, so it's possible. And after the game was over, just the uh, the the reception that he got, the fans hung around and and uh, the the tribute that they gave him. And and really, he's been like a spiritual uh, leader of that team. Mm -hmm. I mean, they bring him in during training camp and during games to to give pep talks, and nobody could give a talk and get a team fired up the way Ray Lewis could do it. Absolutely, absolutely. He's part of the great legacy of pro football and a great legacy of. Uh, Baltimore sports as well. So, yep. Um, I thank you for your time. Um, I learned I learned a little bit today, so I appreciate that. Um, so, um, thanks again.